An opiate is uh, a substance that's chemically similar to morphine and they uh, produce euphoria or, or a kind of sense of well-being. They can depress your respiration uh, and they decrease pain. There are prescription medications such as Oxycontin or Percocet and illicit opiates such as heroin. It's uh, very likely that people can overdose on a prescription medication just as much as an illicit medication. An opioid overdose typically produces decreased responsiveness, decreased respirations or absent respirations. The patient may turn cyanotic or blue and often will uh, have pinpoint pupils. Naloxone is a, a rescue medication that temporarily reverses the effects of an opiate overdose. Naloxone was introduced about 18 months ago to our officers after an extensive training period. Since that time, we've deployed it approximately 16 times. I've seen opiate overdoses over 100 times in my career as a paramedic. Probably once or twice a month, I encounter a patient um, where I need to use naloxone. We responded to a motor vehicle accident where the person was exhibiting signs of an overdose and the naloxone was administered immediately once we determined what was going on. Their vital signs improved, their color improved, and then about five minutes they were conscious and alert. We go into these scenes, usually they're hectic, the family's upset, the bystanders are upset, these patients are turning blue, they are unresponsive. We administer the medication almost instantly. We note an increase in their mental status. They begin to turn pink. They start to breathe adequately. So I would say it's an overall positive experience. Every community, every law enforcement agency has naloxone, is administering on a regular basis, and dealing with opiate problems. It's to the point now where many agencies such as are using naloxone more than we're using defibrillators to save lives. So I think that says something about the magnitude of the problem and how far reaching it is into our community. Somebody who's been rescued with naloxone always needs to be evaluated by EMS and in the medical facility. It will not address uh, other medications such as benzodiazepines like uh, Valium or Ativan. Uh, it will not address alcohol overdoses. It will not address uh, illicit drug overdoses like uh, ketamine, uh, ecstasy. It will only work for opioid overdoses. There are many other conditions that can look like an opioid overdose, such as diabetic emergencies, strokes, seizures. Uh, naloxone will not treat those other conditions, but you won't harm the patient. There are a series of steps that you should take if you suspect that someone is experiencing an opioid overdose. First, you should check their responsiveness and stimulate the person by speaking loudly or yelling at the person, tapping on their shoulder, performing a sternal rub, and checking for breathing. Next, you should call 911. Once you have called for emergency assistance, you should administer the naloxone. To do this, you should first assemble the device by popping the two yellow caps off the injector. Attaching the atomizer to the injector. Popping the purple cap off the vial. Screwing the vial into the injector. You are now ready to administer the naloxone. First, tilt the victim's head back. Next, spray half of the medication into one nostril, then spray the remaining half into the other nostril. Once you have administered the naloxone, you should place the victim in the recovery position. Turn the patient on one side and place his hands underneath his head. You should also make sure that the top leg is bent forward. Then check again to make sure that the victim is breathing. So naloxone is an antidote that displaces opioids from the opioid receptor in, in, in the body uh, and essentially is a rescue medication for uh, opioid overdose. It's a temporary antidote and frequently the duration of action of the naloxone is much shorter than the duration of action of the substance that caused the overdose. So the naloxone will wear off in a period of 30 minutes or so and the patient uh, can once again get into trouble. So we uh, monitor the patients very carefully and it's not unusual to give them uh, additional doses of naloxone once they uh, arrive to the emergency department. It saves lives, there's no doubt about it. It brings people back from the opiate overdose, uh, but it's just a start. It's very, the very first step to get them on a path to recovery, to get them to a treatment center, to get them to either an inpatient or outpatient facility, and to educate their family, their friends, their coworkers about signs to watch out for when they're relapsing back to addiction. Patients who are using narcotics uh, consistently and have become tolerant or habituated will suffer withdrawal symptoms when treated with naloxone. The breathing 
starts to increase, the patients also become very uncomfortable. They may become nauseated, sweaty, they may have diarrhea, they may have muscle cramps, they become very agitated and twitchy. Naloxone comes uh, in several different forms. It can be administered intravenously, uh, it can be administered intramuscularly um, via injection, or it can be um, sprayed up the nose using an atomizer. The intravenous route is the most effective, however, the, uh, the other routes are so close to being uh, uh, that effective that essentially there's no difference. There are several different um, brands of naloxone available. One of them uh, is called Evzio, that's an auto injector similar to an EpiPen. There's another uh, device called Naloxone Intranasal, which is a commercially uh, available uh, nasal atomizer. In addition to that, um, generic naloxone is available and you can assemble your own kit uh, using the components. The naloxone should be kept at room temperature and not allowed to freeze or heat up too much as uh, that may damage the device or uh, potentially inactivate the medication. Expired naloxone should be discarded and a fresh supply obtained. In 2014, Governor Christie signed the Overdose Protection Act, which provides wide immunity for uh, prescribers, dispensers, and people administering naloxone in good faith. You can't bring a legal action against the prescriber, uh, the dispenser, or the person uh, administering the medication. You know, our community is very diverse, but we see whether it's uh, lower income, middle income, high income, so it really knows no boundaries. So it speaks to the magnitude of the problem, not only in this area, but throughout the state of New Jersey and throughout the country. This type of addiction is a chronic illness, uh, and people uh, often need to go through several cycles of rehabilitation and counseling. But there are many people who have had addiction and who are now in remission and you know, leading uh, successful lives.